Hey, now that you've mastered a few of these techniques of solving first order differential equations, and, and namely we have uh, just basic integration, we, we now have this, uh, the separable equations, and we just mastered these linear first order differential equations. We need to stop, start talking about something a little bit more specific. And, and what I mean by that is that when we start manipulating these differential equations from where they start into how they're fitting our technique, sometimes we're running into some domain issues. And so I haven't mentioned it. My videos have been more focused on the technique, like how do you do it? What's it mean? What are we going for? But now we need to start thinking about that. And so for the next few videos, at the very end, I'm going to have you go back and think, well, now what, what did we really do here? So I'm going to focus on technique first, just like I did in the last two videos. Uh, but then I'm going to go back and say, hey, there's some pieces that we need to understand. And I think that's best because you'll understand the technique, and then you'll go ahead and go, okay, now that I understand what's really going on, I can see that we might have some issues here. And so I'm going to walk you through a few examples of when we're going to face some domain issues when we're rewriting our differential equations to fit a certain technique. So a lot of times this happens on our, our linear uh, first order differential equations. So a couple things we want to we want to really nail down. Number one is that when we're doing our linear first order differential equations and we're coming up with that row, that, that piece, that missing piece that's completing our product rule, we call that an integrating factor. So when you see that, it's in the title of the last few videos, but I never mentioned it. Again, I was focused on the technique, but now we need to start nailing down some specifics. So what that's called, what that row is called is an integrating factor. And and that's that missing piece that's creating the product rule for us. So whenever you see that, whenever you hear that, I want you to start thinking, oh, okay, integrating factor. And from now on, I'm going to start using that language when we get to it, especially like Bernoulli equations. When we get there in a few videos, I'm going to be saying things like, okay, now we find our integrating factor, or this is our integrating factor, or we use that. And so when we're dealing with our linear first order differential equations, we solve those by, by implementing, implementing this integrating factor that we multiply on both sides and allows us to integrate very easily by completing that product rule. So the technique is there, now we're just kind of naming stuff. Also, not on every one of them, but on a lot of these linear first order differential equations, to get them in the right format, we had to divide. But we know something about dividing, we know that we can't ever divide by zero. You go, well, wait a minute, so if if I have to divide by zero to get from here to here, and these these four examples are in the last video uh, that that we talked about. So if I if I have to divide to go from here to here, what if that x is zero? You go, wow, that's a really good point. What if that x is zero? And so many times, what you're going to see a lot of people do, myself included, is in the back of it. Some we always should show it. I should, I should be showing it, I'm going to show it now, but I was more focused on the technique. Some people don't even show this, and they need to, um, because what's happening is when we're using a certain technique to solve a differential equation, sometimes we have to place restrictions on the domain to make that technique work. So for instance, if we want to solve this by a linear differential equation, first order differential equation, we're going to have to divide by x. That x can't be zero. And so we're going to start putting conditions on this. So when we get it, go, okay, uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to divide by x. I can't have the x be zero. But then past that, you go, okay. X can't be zero. I think we all, we all understand that. You can't divide by zero. And for things like homogeneous equations, what we get to in a, in a few videos, that's fine. And that's what we're going to stop at is, okay, well, we're, we just can't have zero. But especially for linear, sometimes it's really nice to not have to deal with an absolute value. And why? one of the reasons why that is, is because when we're dealing with these linear differential equations, when we solve them, they're always going to have some sort of x expression on the left-hand side and an x expression on the right-hand side, and it's nice to be able to simplify them. And so if one of them has an absolute value and the other one doesn't, that's an issue. And we can't simplify that very well. Now, in homogeneous, we sometimes run the same thing, but typically it's ln of an absolute value. We have absolute value wrapped up into something where we wouldn't be able to simplify anyway. But with linear, we can simplify a lot of these after we go ahead and use our integrating factor, after we go ahead and do our integration, and then we go, okay, hey, so there's an x here, there's an x here, let's simplify it. 
that's really hard to do if one of them has an absolute value and one of them doesn't. And so many times when we're dealing with these linear, many times means like every time, we, when we divide by this x, watch what happens. When we divide by this x, you are going to get something that says, oh, yeah, when I integrate that, I'm going to get an ln absolute value x. What's that work down to? e to the ln says I'm going to have just that absolute value of x. But if I'm going to get something on the right-hand side that has x's, I really don't want to be messing around with an absolute value. And so what a lot of times we do, instead of just saying, well, x can't be equal to 0 because I'm dividing by 0, if I, do, if I let that happen, x can't be equal to 0, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say, let's make x greater than 0. That way I'm not dividing by 0, but then that way I'm also not having to deal with an absolute value on my integrating factor. That's where that comes from. I hope that makes sense. And so when we're dealing with these, sure, our technique is hopefully now perfect. We understand exactly what we're doing. I spent a long time explaining that. Now we have some finer points. Like, why in the world are they saying x has to be greater than 0? Why? We can't, can we just divide? Yes. But when we try to make these differential equations fit a certain technique, sometimes we run into issues, and so we have to place conditions on that domain and say, this is going to work as long as x is greater than 0. Then I can do things like divide by x. Hey, I'm not dividing by 0. Then I can do things like that's just going to be e to the ln of x to the fifth instead of absolute value of x to the fifth. Then when I solve this difference equation after using my integrating factor, the x's on the right hand on the left hand side, well, they're not going to have absolute value, but now the x's on the right hand side won't either, and I'll be able to simplify them. So that's where these conditions are coming from. That's why we use them. It makes first, it makes our method possible. We have to restrict that in order to divide by x. And then it lets us simplify a little bit better, some other reasons sometimes, um, that we can not have that absolute value is important for us. And so we'll, we'll restrict it even more and say not just not zero, but let's just make it greater than zero. That's one reason why we do that. <clears throat> Look at the next one. Maybe you can start seeing it now. Hey, we're dividing by x. You're going to absolutely say, okay, uh, x can't be equal to zero. You're never going to be able to divide by 0, but you have to divide by x in order to make this technique work. That's a linear first order differential equation. We're going to use an integrating factor to take care of that. Oh, but wait. If I divide by x, I'm probably going to get this 1 over x inside that integral for the integrating factor. I don't want to have to deal with the absolute value. Let's make it positive. That way we understand that we're not going to have to mess around with that. Um, and on the right-hand side, we'll have some x's. Now on the left-hand side, we'll be able to take the uh, x's without absolute value on both sides and simplify them. That's the idea. Up here, kind of the same idea. You can, you can see it here, too. But same idea here. We're dividing by x. We have this, I can't divide by 0. But because of the integrating factor, I'm going to be getting this ln of x. Well, I don't want to have the absolute value because e to the ln absolute value of x, if I were to simplify that, I'd still have the absolute value of x, and that wouldn't simplify with something later on. So oftentimes we'll just say, let's just, uh, let's make this greater than zero. That way we can avoid dividing by zero, we can avoid the absolute value, it makes things really streamlined. And the same thing on this one. If we divide by 2x, well, we're still dividing by x. We're still saying there's a 1 over x. That's still, I want to avoid the absolute value. And so we'll say, okay, let's make x strictly greater than zero, and that's what you're going to see a lot of the times on these linear first order differential equations. So just a, a, a recap of everything we've done right now, not much really, um, but the idea is, number one, your technique should be there. The name of the thing that we're multiplying to, to let this technique work is called an integrating factor. It's on the title, I just never mentioned it in that video, I'm going to be using it from now on. So whenever I say that, the integrating factor, that's what the rule of x is. And in every case, that's what's completing the product rule for us. Secondly, we need to start thinking about domain. And so for the next few videos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all the problems. I'm going to focus mostly on the technique that's going to get you rolling on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, you need to think back on this. Look at some of these problems. What's the problem in making the differential equation fit this particular technique? In linear first-order differential equations, 
a lot of times we're dividing by a variable. We need that variable to not be zero. Then, especially on linear, not so much on homogeneous, but we have this x greater than zero, so we avoid some absolute values. Uh, there's, there's another reason for that, uh, but most of it I would just want you to think of that, that we're avoiding absolute value. So I hope that helps you understand why we have x greater than zero on a lot of these problems now. So if you were working out of a, a book or your teacher goes, ah, they, you know, you need that. Why do we need that? We need that because we're divided by a variable that can't be zero. We're going to use that in our integrating factor. We don't want absolute value. And some of the domain issues on these linears get a little crazy. And so we restrict that to x greater than zero to avoid some of those issues. That's the second reason. Um, so I just want you to know that. So we're referencing that at the end of our videos. Watch for those. So after we do a technique, we're going to master the technique. We're going to talk about domain. Hope that helps. I'll see you for the next video.